state tax. Basic principles. Death is the generating source from which the taxing power takes its being, and that it is the power to transmit or the transmission from the dead to the living on which the tax is more immediately based. Hence, it accrues as of the death of the dissident by operation of law. Inheritance tax accrues at the time of the dissident death, but the obligation to pay the same is different and is fixed by law. The tax is measured by the value of the property at the time of death. Inheritance tax is measured, tax base, by the value at the time of such property as it passes to him. Example death. Subsequently, appreciation or depreciation is immaterial. Inheritance taxation is governed by the statute in force at the time of the death of the dissident. Tax laws cannot be given retroactive effect unless they explicitly provide for it. But take note that inheritance taxes are no longer imposed under the NIRC, only state taxes are imposed. Definition A state tax is a tax on the one right to transmit property at death and on certain transfers by the dissident during his lifetime or two, those which are made by the law equivalent of testamentary dispositions. There must be a transfer of ownership or quantifiable interest or economic benefits from the dissident to the living person. Nature. State tax is not a direct tax on property, neither it is a capitation tax. That is, the tax is laid neither on the property nor on the transfer or the transferee. In other words, it is an excise or privilege tax imposed on the right to succeed to receive or take property by or under a will or the intestacy law, or a deed, grant, or gift to become operative at or after death. Lorenza versus Posadas. Purpose or object. Purpose. To tax the shifting of economic benefits and enjoyment of property from the dead to the living. Taxable objects or subjects. 1. Right or privilege of the deceased person to transmit his or her estate to his or her lawful ears and beneficiaries at the time of death. 2. Uncertain transfers during his lifetime, which are made by law as equivalent to testamentary disposition. Four justification theories for the imposition of estate tax. 1. Benefit received theory. The state collects the tax because of the services it renders in the distribution of the estate of the dissident, either by law or in accordance with his will. Number two, privilege theory or estate partnership theory. Succession to the property of a deceased person is not a right, but a privilege granted by the state and consequently the legislature can constitutionally burden such succession with a tax. The state collects the tax because of the protection it provides in the acquisition of large estates. Hence, the state is a silent or passive partner in the accumulation of said large property. Number three, ability to pay theory. Receipt of inheritance, which is in the nature of unearned wealth or windfall, places assets into the hands of the heirs and beneficiaries. This creates an ability to pay the tax and thus contributes to government income. Number four, redistribution of wealth theory. Receipt of inheritance is a contributing factor to the inequalities in wealth and income. The imposition of estate tax reduces the property received by the successor, which helps promote a more equitable distribution of wealth in society. The tax base is the value of the property and the progressive scheme of taxation is precisely motivated by the desire to mitigate the evils of inheritance in the present form. The taxes paid by rich people are programmed for disbursement by Congress for the benefit of the poor in terms of social services, education, health, etc. Time and transfer of properties. Dissidents' interest is 
to its extent at the time of his death. Section 85, letter A. State taxation is governed by the statute in force at the time of death of the dissident. State tax accrues as of the death of the dissident and the accrual of the tax is distinct from the obligation to pay the same. Upon the death of the dissident, succession takes place and the right of the state to tax the privilege to transmit the state vests instantly upon death. Section 3 RR2 thus 2003 Despite the transfer of properties and rights at the time of death, the executor or administrator shall not deliver a distributive share to any party interested in the state, unless there is a certification from CIR that state tax has been paid. Section 94. Time of death governs 1. The determination of the extent of the dissident's interest for computing his gross estate. Number 2. The statute that governs state taxation and number three, the accrual of the state tax. Article 777 of the Civil Code. The rights to the succession are transmitted from the moment of the death of the dissident. Section 3, RR2, 2003. The law that governs the imposition of its state tax. It is a well-settled rule that the state taxation is governed by the statute in force at the time of death of the dissident. The state tax accrues as of the death of the dissident and the accrual of the tax is distinct from the obligation to pay the same. Upon the death of the dissident, succession takes place and the right of the state to tax, the privilege to transfer or transmit the state vests instantly upon death. Taxable transfers. Taxable transfers are complete when the transfer divested himself of all economic beneficial interest in himself or his estate. Number one, transfer mortis causa. Gratuitous transfers that takes effect after death, either to state or interstate. A donation which purports to be one intervivus that withholds from the donee the right to dispose of the donated property during the donor's lifetime is in truth one mortis causa. In a donation mortis causa, the right of disposition is not transferred to the donee while the donor is still alive. The requisites of a testamentary disposition should be fulfilled. Characteristics McGlassen versus Years of Kabatingan, 2002. It conveys no title or ownership to the transferee before the death of the transferor, or what amounts to the same thing, that the transferor should retain the ownership, full or naked, and control of the property while alive. Number two, that before his death, the transfer should be revocable by the transferor at will. Ad nutum, that revocability may be provided for indirectly by means of a reserved power in the donor to dispose of the properties conveyed. Number three, that the transfer should be void if the transfer should survive the transferee. Donation mortis causa is subject to estate tax. Number two, transfers inter vivos. Gratuitous transfers that take effect after death, either testate or interstate. See donor's tax for requisites. General rule. Donation inter vivos are subject to donor's tax. Exception subject to estate tax when inter vivos is treated by law a substitute for testamentary dispositions. Example, transfers which are inter vivos in form but mortis causa in substance. Example, transfer in contemplation of death. Section 85, NIRC. Letter A, transfer with retention or reservation of certain rights. Section 85, letter B. B, revocable transfer. Section 85, letter C. Letter C, transfer of property arising under general power of appointment, Section 85D. Letter D, transfer for insufficient consideration, Section 85G. Note, they see further discussion in the valuation of gross estate. Letter F, classification of dissident. State tax applies only to individuals. The dissident may be classified into 1. Citizen or RC or non-resident citizen. Resident alien, RA, or three, non-resident alien.
concept of residence. Residence and domicile are used interchangeably without distinction. For purposes of estate taxation, residence refers to the permanent home, the place to which, whenever absent, one intends to return, animus revertendi, and depends on facts and circumstances in the sense that they disclose intent. It is therefore not necessarily the actual place of residence. Corey versus Tan Corey, 1956. Situs of intangible personal properties. General rule, mobilia sequentur personam, principal taxation of intangible personal properties, such as credits, bills, bank deposits, promissory notes, and corporate stocks, follows the residence or domicile of owner thereof. Citus is the domicile or residence of the owner, collector versus fisher. Exceptions, when it is inconsistent with express provisions of law. Number two, when justice does not demand that it should be, as where the property in fact has a situs elsewhere. Intangible properties which are considered situated in the Philippines, section 104. Number one, franchise which must be exercised in the Philippines, shares, obligations or bonds issued by any corporation or sociedad anonima organized or constituted in the Philippines in accordance with its laws. Number three, shares, obligations or bonds issued by any foreign corporation, 85% of the business of which is located in the Philippines. Number four, shares, obligations or bonds issued by any foreign corporation if such shares, obligations or bonds have acquired a business status in the Philippines. And number five, shares or rights in any partnership, business, or industry established in the Philippines. Rule of reciprocity. There is reciprocity if the foreign country of which the dissident was a citizen and resident at the time of his death, one, did not impose a transfer tax of any character in respect of intangible personal property of citizen of the Philippines not residing in the foreign country or allowed a similar exemption from transfer tax in respect of intangible personal property owned by citizens of the Philippines not residing in that country. Gross estate versus net estate. Gross estate, value at the time of death of all the dissident's property whenever situated. However, in the case of a non-resident alien at the time of his death, only that part of the entire gross estate which is situated in the Philippines shall be included in his taxable estate, section 85. Net state, value of the state after all deductions have been made against the gross estate, subject to the graduated tax rate, section 6 RR 2-2003. This is the tax base. Formula for state tax, gross estate, section 85, less deductions. Section 86. Net estate before share of surviving spouse if married, less net share of the surviving spouse in the conjugal property, section 86, letter C, equals net taxable estate multiplied by tax rate, section 84. State tax due, less tax credit if any, section 86, letter E or 110, letter B, equals the state tax due if any. Determination of gross estate and net estate and composition. Summary of the composition of the gross estate and exclusions, deductions therefrom. Resident citizen, non-resident citizen, resident alien, and non-resident alien. So composition and determination of gross estate. Under RC, NRC, and RA, the value of the time of death of all the deceased real property wherever situated b tangible personal property wherever situated and letter c intangible personal property wherever situated composition and determination of gross estate under nra the value at the time of his death of all the deceased real property located in the philippines tangible personal property located in the philippines and intangible personal property with a situs in the Philippines, subject to the rule of reciprocity.
Note, if there is reciprocity, intangible assets are excluded from gross estate. Exclusion from gross estate. Section 85H and Section 87 under RC, NRC, and RA. A. GSIS proceeds. B. Accruals from SSS. C. Proceeds of life insurance where the beneficiary is irrevocably appointed. D. Proceeds of life insurance under a group insurance taken by employer. And letter E. War damage payments and benefits received from U.S. Veterans Administration. F. Transfer by way of bona fide sales. G. Transfer of property to the national government or to any of its political subdivisions. H. Separate property of the surviving spouse. I. Merger of user fraud in the owner of the naked title. J. Properties held in trust by the dissident. Transmission of inheritance or legacy by fiduciary. Ear or legacy to the fide commissary. K. Transmission from the first ear, legacy or donee in favor of another beneficiary in accordance with the desire of their predecessor. Or, I mean, not donee but done. In favor of another beneficiary in accordance with the desire of their predecessor. L. Acquisition and or transfer expressly declared as not taxable. M. Bequests, devices, legacies, or transfers to social welfare, cultural, and charitable institution. Deductions from gross estate to arrive at the nest state. Ordinary deductions under RC, NRC, or RA. 1. Expenses, losses, indebtedness, taxes, lit. Funeral expenses, judicial expenses, claims against the state, claims against insolvent persons, unpaid mortgage and debt, taxes, losses, vanishing deductions, transfers for public use, amounts received under RA 4917, special deductions, family home, standard deduction, medical expenses, share in conjugal property. Under NRA, ordinary deductions are proportionate deductions for expenses, losses, indebtedness, taxes, funeral expenses, judicial expenses, claims against the state, claims against insolvent persons, unpaid mortgage and debt, taxes, losses. Number two, vanishing deductions, three transfers for public use, no amounts received under RA 4917. No special deductions share in conjugal property. Valuation of gross estate, section 88. General rule, gross estate equals fair market value at the time of the dissident's death. Real property, one, appraised value, whichever is higher between A, fair market value as determined by the commissioner or zonal value, or B, Fair market value as shown in the schedule of values fixed by the provincial or city as a source. If there is no zonal value, the taxable base is the fair market value that appears in the latest tax declaration. Number two, if there is an improvement, the value of the improvement is the construction cost per building permit or the fair market value per latest tax declaration. Personal property. 1. Fair market value at the time of death, if none, acquisition cost for recently acquired properties or the current market price for the previously acquired properties. Section 40, letter B. Number 2. Stocks, bonds, and other securities. A. If listed and traded, stocks equals value is the mean between the highest and the lowest coded selling prices at the date of death, if none, nearest the date of death. Section 5, RR02-2003. B. If unlisted stocks, ordinary common shares, book value at the time of death, or preferred shares, par value. Note. Bonds, mortgages, and certificates of stocks are taxable at the place where they are physically located. Number three, proceeds of life insurance with revocable beneficiary, face value of policy, not cash surrender value. 
right to use of from, use of habitation and annuity. 1. Probable life of the beneficiary in accordance with the latest basic standard mortality table shall be taken into account. Items to be included in gross estate. Items to be included in the gross estate section 85. 1. Property owned by the dissident actually and physically present in his state at the time of its death. Number 2. Dissident's interest. Number 3. Property is not physically in the state, such as A. Transfers in contemplation of death. Section 85B. B. Transfers with retention or reservation of certain rights. Section 85B. C. Revocation transfer. Section 85C. D. Property passing under general power of appointment. Section 85D. Letter E. Transfers for insufficient consideration. Section 85G. F. Proceeds of life insurance. Section 85E. G. Claims against insolvent persons and capital of the surviving spouse. Section 85H. Property owned actually and physically. This includes properties and interests in properties possessed, such as land, buildings, shares of stock, vehicles, bank deposits, etc. The dissident is actually and physically in possession of. Dissident's interest, Section 85, Letter A. This includes any interest having value or capable of being valued, which is owned by the dissident existing at the time of death, such as dividend declared on or before death but is received by the state after death, partnership profits which have accrued before his death, but received after death. This also includes those transferred by the dissident at the time of his death. No, when dissident had relinquished his interest before his death, he could not be deemed to have transmitted interest in such property at his death. Transfers in <coughs> Contemplation of Death, Section 85, Letter B. The term in contemplation of death as used in state taxation does not refer to the general expectation of death. The words mean that it is the thought of death as a controlling motive which induces the disposition of the property for the purpose of avoiding the tax. The dissident's motive is a question of fact. Thus, the imminence of death may afford convincing evidence of the impelling cause of transfer. However, it is a contemplation of death and not necessarily contemplation of imminent death to which this statute refers. These transfers should be without or with insufficient considerations. The law does not specify the number of years prior to a dissident's death within which a transfer can be considered in contemplation of death. The Leon. Transfers with retention or reservation of certain rights. These are transfers with retention or reservation of certain rights that result to the incapacity of transferee to freely enjoy and dispose of the property until the transfer's death. And the transfer may be regarded as having been intended to take effect in possession or enjoyment at the transfer's death. These does not include bona fide sale for an adequate and full consideration. Revocable transfer, section 85, letter C. General rule, a transfer is a revocable transfer where, number one, there is a transfer by trust or otherwise, number two, the enjoyment thereof was subject at the date of his death to any change through the exercise of a power in whatever capacity exercisable by A, the dissident alone, B, the dissident in conjunction with any other person without regard to when or from what source the dissident acquired such power to alter, amend, revoke, or terminate, or C, where any such power is relinquished in contemplation of the dissident's death. Exception, bona fide sale for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. Note. The power to alter, amend, or revoke shall be considered to exist on the date of the dissident's death, even though a. The exercise of the power is subject to a precedent giving or notice, or b. 
the alteration, amendment, or revocation takes effect only on the expiration of its stated period after the exercise of the power, whether or not, on or before the date of the dissident's death, notice has been given or the power has been exercised. If notice has not been given or the power has not been exercised before the date of his death, such notice shall be considered to have been given or the power exercised on the date of his death. Transfer of property under general power of appointment, section 85, letter D. Power of appointment. The right to designate the person or property who shall enjoy and possess certain property from the state of a prior dissident, de Mondon. Number one, the general power of appointment, when it gives to the dissident the power to appoint any person he pleases, including himself. The dissident holds the appointed property with all the attributes of ownership. He had a power excisable in favor of himself, his creditors or creditors of his estate. Number two, special power of appointment. When the dissident can appoint only among a designated class of persons other than himself, his estate, the creditors of his estate, or if it's the power of appointment expressly not exercisable in favor of the dissident, his estate, his creditors, or creditors of his estate. General rule, property over which the dissident held the power of appointment is excluded in his gross estate. Exemption to be included. Included if the power of appointment is general. Among those to be included in the gross estate is property arising under a general power of appointment exercised by the dissident. 1. By will or 2. By deed executed in contemplation of or intended to take effect in possession or enjoyment or after his death or number three by deed under which he has retained for his life or or any period not ascertainable without reference to his death or for any period which does not in fact end before his death a the possession or enjoyment of or the right to the income from the property or b the right either alone or in conjunction with any person to designate the persons who shall enjoy or possess the property or the income therefrom. Transfers for insufficient consideration, section 85, letter G. Transfers, trusts, interests, rights, or powers denominated as transfer in contemplation of death, revocable transfer and property passing under general power of appointment, made, created, exercised, or relinquished for a consideration in money or money's worth, but it's not a bona fide sale for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. The value to be included in the gross estate is the excess of the fair market value of the property at the time of the dissident's death over the consideration received. Example, case A. If bona fide sale, no value shall be included in the gross estate. Case B. If not a bona fide sale, the excess of the fair market value at the time of death over the value of the consideration received by the dissident shall form part of his gross estate. KC, if inter vivos transfer is proven fictitious or simulated, total value of the property at the time of death included in the gross estate. The transfer for insufficient consideration must fall under any of the following number one. Transfer in contemplation of death, number two, revocable transfer, or number three, property passing under a GPA. Otherwise, the tax imposed is donor's tax. Proceeds of life insurance, section 85, letter E. Inclusion of proceeds of life insurance to the gross estate depends on one, designated beneficiary, number two, revocability of the insurance, number three, period and source of funds used in premiums. When taxable, included in the gross estate, proceeds of life insurance taken out by the dissident on his own life shall be included in the gross estate in the following cases. 1. Beneficiary is the state of the deceased, his executor or administrator irrespective of whether or not the insured retained the power of revocation or number 2. Beneficiary is 
other than the dissident's estate, executor or administrator, when designation of beneficiary is not expressly made irrevocable. Note, under the Insurance Code of 1978, if not clear or silent, the designation of the beneficiary is presumed to be irrevocable, hence includable in the dissident's gross estate. When not taxable, one accident insurance proceeds, as the tax code specifically mentions only life insurance policies. Number two, proceeds of a group insurance policy taken out by a company for its employees. Number three, amount receivable by any beneficiary irrevocably designated in the policy of insurance by the insured. The transfer is absolute and the insured did not retain any legal interest in the insurance. Number four, proceeds of insurance policies issued by the GSIS to government officials and should be proven. As a rule, regardless of the amount the debtor is unable to pay, the full amount of the claim against the insolvent person should be included in the gross estate of the dissident. The portion of the claim which is not collectible should be allowed as a deduction from the gross estate. Capital of the Surviving Spouse, Section 85, Letter H. It is not part of the gross estate of the deceased spouse. Deductions from estate. Employees which are exempt from all taxes, PD 1146. Benefits accruing under the SSS law, RA 1161. Proceeds of life insurance payable to ears of deceased members of military personnel, RA 360. To determine the conjugal or separate character of proceeds, the following factors are considered. 1. Policy was taken before marriage. Source of funds determines ownership of the proceeds of life insurance. Number 2. Policy was taken during marriage. A. Beneficiary is the state of the insured. Proceeds are presumed conjugal. Hence, one half share of the surviving spouse is not taxable. Letter B. Beneficiary is third person. Proceeds are payable to beneficiary even if premiums were paid out of the conjugal. Claims against insolvent persons. For estate tax purposes, an insolvent is a person whose properties are not sufficient to satisfy whether fully or partially his debts. A judicial declaration of insolvency is not required, but the incapacity of the debtor Deductions and or losses already deducted from gross income can no longer be deducted from gross estate. Further, deductions should not be compensated for any insurance or extrajudicial settlement. Otherwise, they are not valid deductions. Ordinary deductions A. Expenses, losses, indebtedness, and taxes, ETC or elite. Funeral expenses Section 86, letter A, number 1, letter A. Actual funeral expenses shall mean those which are actually incurred in connection with and before the internment or burial of the deceased and two must be paid out of the state and not by another person or out of contributions from friends and relatives. These must be duly supported by receipts or invoices or other evidence to show that they were actually incurred. They include a. The mourning apparel of the surviving spouse and the unmarried minor children of the deceased bought and used in the occasion of the burial. b. Expenses for the deceased wife, including food and drinks. Letter c. Publication charges for death notices. d. Telecommunication expenses incurred in informing relatives of the deceased. e. Cost of burial plot, tombstone, monument, or mausoleum, but not their upkeep. In case the deceased owns a family estate or several burials, lots, only the value corresponding to the plot where he is buried is deductible. F. Internment and or cremation fees and charges and G. All other expenses incurred. 4. The performance of the rites and ceremonies incident to internment. Limitation. Allowable deduction is not to exceed 200000 and whichever is lower of a. The actual funeral expenses, whether or not paid up to the time of internment, or b. An amount equal to 5% of the gross estate.
The unpaid portion of the funeral expenses incurred, which is in excess of the 200000 threshold is not allowed to be claimed as a deduction under claims against the state. Section 6, letter A, number 1 of RR 02-200. Not included are expenses incurred after the internment, such as for prayers, masses, entertainment, or the like, are not deductible. Number 2. And a portion of the funeral and burial expenses borne or defrayed by relatives and friends of the deceased are not deductible. 3. Medical expenses as of the last illness will not form part of the funeral expenses but should be claimed as medical expenses. Section 6. RR2-2003. Illustrations. Letter A. If 5% of the gross estate is 220000 and the amount actually incurred is 215, the maximum amount that may be deducted is only 200,000. If 5% of the gross estate is 100,000 and the total amount incurred is 150, where 20,000 thereof is still unpaid, the only amount that can be claimed as deduction for funeral expenses is 100,000. The entire 50 excess amount consisting of 30,000 paid amount and 20 unpaid amount can no longer be claimed as funeral expenses. Neither can the 20,000 unpaid portion be deducted from the gross estate as claims against the state. Judicial expenses of testamentary and interstate proceedings. Expenses allowed as deduction under this category are 1. Those incurred in the inventory taking of assets comprising the gross estate their administration, the payment of debts of the state, as well as the distribution of the state among the ears. In short, these deductible items are expenses. 2. Incurred during the settlement of the state, but not beyond the last day prescribed by law, or the extension thereof, for the filing of the state tax return. Section 86, letter A, number 2, RR2-2003. These expenses must be for the benefit of the state and substantiated by receipts or if unpaid should be supported by a sworn statement of account issued and signed by the creditor judicial expenses may include one fees of executor or administrator number two attorney's fees commissioner versus ca three court fees four accountants fees five Appraiser's fees, 6. Clerk hire, 7. Cost of preserving and distributing the state, 8. Cost of storing or maintaining property of the state, 9. Brokerage fees for selling property of the state. Not deductible, a. Compensation paid for a trustee or the dissident state for his services rendered for the purpose of managing the dissident's real state for the benefit of the testamentary ears lorenzo versus posadas b expenses incurred by the presumptive ear and that of her witnesses for appearance at the trial to oppose the probate of a will numbers letter c attorney's fees incident to litigation incurred by the ears in asserting their respective rights or claims as to who are entitled to the state left by the deceased d premiums paid by the administrator on his bond being exclusively used for his account, since the giving of the bond is in the nature of a qualification for the office and not necessary in the settlement of his estate. Claims against the state, section 86, letter A, number 1, letter C. The word claims is generally construed to mean 1. Debts or demands of a pecuniary nature, number 2. Which could have been enforced against the deceased in his lifetime, and could have been reduced to simple money judgments. These are liabilities of the state or indebtedness of such arising out of contract, tort, or operation of law. Decent versus CDA. Requisites for deductibility of claims against the state. A. The liability represents a personal obligation of the deceased existing at the time of his death, except unpaid obligations incurred incident to his death such as unpaid funeral expenses, expenses incurred 
up to the time of internment, and unpaid medical expenses, which are classified under a different category of deductions. Letter B, the liability was contracted in good faith and for adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. C, the claim must be a death or claim which is valid in law and enforceable in court. D, the indebtedness must not have been condoned by the creditor or the action to collect from the dissident must not have prescribed. E, they must be reasonably certain in amount and substantiated. Substantiation requirements in case of simple loan including advances. One, the debt instrument must be duly notarized at the time of the indebtedness was incurred, such as promissory note or contract of loan, except for loans granted by financial institutions where notarization is not part of the business practice or policy of the financial institution lender. Number two, duly notarized certification from the creditor as to the unpaid balance of the death, including interest, as of the time of death. If the creditor is a corporation, the sworn certification should be signed by the president or vice president or other principal officer of the corporation. If the creditor is a partnership, the sworn certification should be signed by any of the general partners. In case the creditor is a bank or other financial institutions, the certification shall be executed by the branch manager of the bank, financial institution, which monitors and manages the loan of the dissident debtor. If the creditor is an individual, the sworn certification should be signed by him. In any of these cases, the one who should certify must not be a relative of the borrower within the fourth civil degree, either by consanguinity or affinity, except when the requirement below is complied with. When the lender or the president or vice president or principal officer of the creditor corporation or the general partner of the creditor partnership is a relative of the debtor, in the degree mentioned above, a copy of the promissory note or other evidence of the indebtedness must be filed with the RDO, having jurisdiction over the borrower within 15 days from the execution thereof. Number three. Proof of financial capacity of the creditor to lend the amount at the time the loan was granted, as well as its latest audited balance sheet with a detailed schedule of its receivable showing the unpaid balance of the dissident debtor. In case the creditor is an individual who is no longer required to file income tax returns with the Bureau, a duly notarized declaration by the creditor of his capacity to lend at the time when the loan was granted without prejudice to verification that may be made by the BIR to substantiate such declaration of the creditor. If the creditor is a non-resident executor, administrator, or any of the legal ears must submit a duly notarized declaration by the creditor of his capacity to lend at the time when the loan was granted, authenticated or certified to us such by the tax authority of the country where the non-resident creditor is a resident. Number four, a statement under oath executed by the administrator or executor of the state reflecting the disposition of the proceeds of the loan if it was contracted within three years prior to the death of the dissident. If the unpaid obligation arose from purchase of goods or services, one, pertinent documents evidencing the purchase of goods or service such as sales invoice, delivery receipt, for sale of goods or contract for the services agreed to be rendered for sale of services as duly acknowledged, executed and signed by the dissident debtor and creditor and a statement of account given by the creditor as duly received by the dissident debtor. Number two, duly authorized certification from the creditor as to the unpaid balance of the debt, including interest as of the time of death. Number three, Certified true copy of the latest audited balance sheet of the creditor with a detailed schedule of its receivable showing the unpaid balance of the dissident debtor. Moreover, a certified true copy of the updated latest subsidiary ledger or records of the debtor dissident should likewise be submitted, where the settlement is made to the court in a testate or interstate proceeding. Pertinent documents 
filed with the court evidencing the claims against the state and the court order approving the said claims if already issued in addition to the documents mentioned in the preceding paragraph. Claims against insolvent persons, section 86, letter A, number 1, letter D. These are claims of the states against insolvent persons which are not collectible to be deductible from the gross estate. Additional requirements. A. The incapacity of the debtor to pay his obligation should be proven, although a judicial declaration of insolvency is not required. Letter B. The full amount owed by the insolvent must first be included in the dissident's gross estate. And C. If the insolvent could only pay a partial amount, the full amount owed shall be included in the gross estate, and the amount uncollectible shall be allowed as a deduction. Unpaid mortgages, losses, and taxes. Section 86, letter A, number 1, letter E. Unpaid mortgages, requisites for deductibility, section 6, dash A5, letter A, RR2, dash 2003. Letter A. The value of the dissonance interests therein, undiminished by such mortgage or indebtedness, is included in the value of the gross estate. Letter B. The mortgages were contracted bona fide and for an adequate and full consideration in money or money's worth. In case the loan of the dissident is only an accommodation loan, where the loan proceeds went to another person, the value of the unpaid loan must be included as a receivable of the state. If there is a legal impediment to recognize the same as a receivable of the state, the said unpaid obligation shall not be allowed as a deduction. In all instances, the mortgage property, to the extent of the dissident's interest therein, should always form part of the taxable gross estate. RR 2-2003 Unpaid taxes requisites for deductibility. A. Taxes which have accrued as of or before the death of the dissident, if it was incurred after, it is chargeable to the income of the state and b unpaid as of the time of his death regardless of whether or not it was incurred in connection with trade or business not included a income tax upon income received after death or b property taxes not accrued before his death or c the state tax due from the transmission of his estate casualty losses requisites for deductibility a. Incurred during the settlement of the state. B. Arising from fire, storms, shipwreck, or other casualties from robbery, theft, or embezzlement. C. Not compensated by insurance or otherwise. D. At the filing of the state tax return, such losses have not been claimed as a deduction for income tax purposes in an income tax return. Letter E incurred not later than the last day for the payment of the state tax as prescribed by law. Casualty loss can be allowed as deduction in one instance only, either for income tax purposes or state tax purposes. Note, see formula for computing ordinary deductions of NRA above. Property previously taxed, section 86, Letter A, number 2, also called as vanishing deductions. There is an amount allowed to reduce the taxable estate of a dissident where property is 1. Received by him from a prior dissident by gift, bequest, device, or inheritance. Number 2. Transferred to him by gift has been the object of previous transfer transaction. Conditions. 1. There must be two deceased persons, and the first one is the donor. Number two, the second dissident dies within five years after the death of a prior dissident, or in case of gift, the dissident donee dies within the same period after the date of the gift. Requisites one death. The present dissident died within five years from the date of the prior dissident or date of gift. Number two. Identity of the property, the property with respect to which deduction is sought, can be identified as the one who received from prior dissident or from the donor. 
or as the property acquired in exchange for the original property so received. Number three, inclusion of the property. The property must have formed part of the gross estate situated in the Philippines of the prior decedent or have been included in the total amount of the gifts of the donor made within five years prior to the present decedent's death. Number four, previous taxation of property. The state tax on the prior succession or the donor's tax on the gift must have been finally determined and paid by the prior decedent or by the donor, as the case may be. Number five, no previous vanishing deduction on the property. No such deduction on the property or the property given in exchange therefor was allowed in determining the value of the net state of the prior decedent. This is intended to preclude the application of the vanishing deduction on the same property more than once. Limitations Value of property The deduction is limited by the value of property previously taxed or the aggregate value of such property if more than one item as finally determined for the purpose of the prior estate tax or gift tax or the value of such property in present dissidents gross estate whichever is lower number two deduction for mortgage or lien the initial value in number one above shall be reduced by the total amount paid if any by the present dissident on any mortgage or other lien on the property where deduction was allowed by reason of the payment of such mortgage or other lien from the gross estate of the prior dissident or gift or donor in determining the state tax of the prior dissident or the donor's tax. Number three, deductions for expenses, etc. The value as reduced in number two shall be further reduced by an amount which bears the same ratio to the amounts allowed as deductions for a expenses, losses, indebtedness, and taxes, ordinary deductions, and b transfers for public use as the amount otherwise deductible for property previously taxed bears to the value of the dissident's gross estate and number four personage of deductions the vanishing deduction shall be the value or final base basis in number three multiplied by the following percentages rate 100 percent within one year prior to the death of the present dissident 80 percent more than one year but not more than two years prior to the death of the dissident. 60% more than two years, but not more than three years. 40% more than three years, but not more than four years. And 20% more than four years, but not more than five years prior to the death of the dissident. Formula for vanishing deductions. Please take note of the limitations above. Value taken of property, less mortgage debt paid, if any, equals initial basis less proportionate deduction equals final basis multiplied by deduction rate vanishing deduction proportionate deduction initial basis over value of the GE of the present dissident times elite plus TPU whatever that is note amount of vanishing deductions is not subtracted from the value of the CPG to determine the share of surviving spouse it is deducted from the exclusive property of the dissident. Transfers for public purpose, section 86, letter A, number 3. There are, 1. Dispositions in the last will and testament or transfers to take effect after the death. Number 2. In favor of the government of the Republic of the Philippines or any political subdivision thereof for exclusively public purposes. The whole amount of all the bequests, legacies, devices, or transfers to or for the use of shall be deductible from gross estate. Number three, provided such amount or value had been included in the computation of the gross estate. Thus, there is no limitation for the amount to be deducted. Amounts received by ears under RA 4917, an act providing that retirement benefits of employees of private firms shall not be subject to attachment, levy, execution, or any tax whatsoever. Section 86, letter A, number 7. Any amount received by the ears from the dissident's employer as a consequence of the death of the dissident employee in accordance with RA 4917 
provided that such amount is included in the gross estate of the dissident. These include retirement benefits from private firms with private benefit plan. If the retiring employee is 50 years old or older, this can only be once availed. B. Benefits granted in case of separation beyond the control of the employee. RA 4917 provides that retirement benefits of private employees shall not be subject to a touchment, levy execution, or any tax. Special deductions. Family Home, Section 86, Letter A, Number 4. It is the dwelling house, including the land on which it, it is situated, where the husband and wife or a head of the family and members of their family reside as certified to by the barangay captain of the locality it is deemed constituted on the house and lot from the time it is actually occupied as the family residence and is considered as such for as long as any of its beneficiaries actually resides therein. Articles 152 and 153 Family Code Temporary absence from the constituted family home due to travel or studies or work abroad etc. does not interrupt actual occupancy. The family home is generally characterized by permanency, that is, the place to which, whenever absent for business or pleasure, one still intends to return. Section 6, letter D, or R2, thus 2003. It must be part of the ACP or CPG or the exclusive properties of either spouse. It may also be constituted by an unmarried head of a family on his or her own property. Section 6, letter D. Citing Article 156 of the Family Code. For purposes of availing this deduction, a person may constitute only one family home. Requisites for deductibility. Section 6, letter D, letter B. RR2, thus 2003. 1. The family home must be the actual residential home of the dissident and his family at the time of his death as certified by the Bronco captain of the locality. Number two, the total value of the family home must be included as part of the gross estate of the dissident. Number three, allowable deduction must be in an amount equivalent to the current fair market value of the family home as declared or included in the gross estate or the extent of the dissident's interest, whether conjugal community or exclusive property whichever is lower, but in no case shall be deduct shown exceed one million. Number four, the dissident was married or if single was ahead of the family. Number five, along with the dissident, any of the beneficiaries must be dwelling in the family home. Number six, the family home as well as the land on which it stands must be owned by the dissident. Therefore, the fair market value of the family home should have been included in the computation of the dissonance gross estate. Beneficiaries of a family home. Number one, the husband and wife or an unmarried person who is the head of the family. And number two, their parents, ascendants, descendants, brothers and sisters, whether the relationship be legitimate or illegitimate, who are living in the family home and who depend upon the head of the family for legal support. Limitation 1 million. Under the train law, it is 10 million. And removal of the sine qua non condition for the exemption or deduction that the family home must have been the dissident's family home as certified by the barangay captain of the locality. Under the train law on state tax, it simplifies the state tax schedule from a six bracket schedule with rates ranging from 5% to 20% to a single rate of 6% based on value of the net estate. Removes the deduction from gross estate pertaining to actual funeral expenses, judicial expenses, and medical expenses, but increases the amount of standard deduction from 1 million to 5 million. It retains the current deductions from gross estate pertaining to claims against the state, claims of the deceased against insolvent persons, unpaid mortgages, or any indebtedness property previously taxed, transfer of public use, family home, and amount received by the ears, RA 4917. It removed the deduction for non-resident states pertaining to expenses, losses, indebtedness, and taxes 
that provides for a standard deduction amounting to 500,000. It deletes the provision that requires executor, administrator, or any one of the ears to include in the state tax return that part of the non-resident alien's gross estate not situated in the Philippines to be able to claim deductions. It repeals the provision requiring the filing of notice of death of the dissident by his or her executor, administrator, and of the legal ears within two months after the dissident's death. It deletes the phrase or where though exempt from tax, the gross value of the estate exceeds 200,000 pesos, emphasizing the need to file an estate tax return of the subject estate. It increases the amount of gross value of estate provided in state tax return that requires to be supported with a statement duly certified by a certified public accountant from 2 million to 5 million. It extends the period within which the state tax return should be filed from six months to one year from the dissident's death. It inserts an additional provision which provides for the payment by installment in case the available cash of the state is insufficient to pay the total estate tax due. Payment shall be allowed within two years from the statutory date of its payment without civil penalty and interest. And finally, it removes the 20,000 limit on the amount of money that may be withdrawn from the bank account of the dissident without certification from the BAR and allows for the withdrawal of any amount but subject to a final withholding tax of 6%.